Most viewers who grew up in the Western world, especially the United States, will be familiar with the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, known helpfully by the acronym Roy G. Biv. These are known as the spectral colors. A spectral color is a color that is evoked by a single wavelength of light on the visible spectrum. But there's one color in that rainbow that doesn't quite belong. I'm talking about indigo. Indigo is a stupid color. Okay, so that's a little sensationalist. What I really mean is that indigo is overrated, and that if you really want a mythic seven color spectrum, there's actually a much better candidate to replace indigo, but we'll get to that later. We can see that indigo is a shade of blue-violet, but we tend not to see it elsewhere as a prominent color. When you were a kid and had your eight count of Crayola crayons, there was no indigo crayon. Ditto your marker pack. So why does indigo keep appearing on our seven-band rainbow? The LGBT pride flag, the most famous use of the rainbow today, doesn't include it. Even in its original eight-stripe version, indigo was merged with blue, and it was replaced entirely by a non-indigo hue in its current form. So, where do we get indigo from anyway? Indigo is named after indigo dye, derived from the plant Indigofera tinctoria. Because of this, it was called Indian dye in Greek, Indicum in Latin, and Indigo in Portuguese. As you can see, it is indeed a dark blue on the violet side. The indigo portion is considered to be from 420 to 450 nanometers on the electromagnetic spectrum. But actual indigo dye reflects back between 445 and 462 nanometers, which places it almost completely within the band of hues that we consider blue today. And on the topic of how we name colors, this is actually something crucial for this discussion. Color naming is subjective and location specific. I don't want to go too deeply into this, but if you're still interested in this topic, Google basic color terms, the universality and evolution. If you're in the mood for something a little more lighthearted, you should look up the color naming project done by Randall Monroe, the XKCD guy. His primary conclusion was, if you ask people to name colors long enough, they go totally crazy. Links in the description zone. But as it turns out, it is possible to study color a little more analytically than anecdotally. So I want to take a quick look at a few of the color models that exist. The most famous color model, the one you probably know, is the artist color wheel, or the RYB model. In the RYB model, the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. You can mix these three primary colors to create three secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. And you can further mix adjacent colors to create tertiary colors, red-orange, yellow-orange, yellow-green, blue-green, blue-violet, or indigo, and red-violet. While this model may seem like the default to most people, it's unable to produce all colors visible to the human eye, so let's explore some more scientifically designed models. The RGB color model was the system created for color televisions and computer monitors. This system works off how our eyes interpret light. It is what's called an additive system, where mixing colors produces brighter ones, unlike the RYB model, which is subtractive, where mixing colors usually result in darker and more muted colors. The RGB model's primary colors are red, green, and blue. Notice how this green differs from the RYB models. It's much brighter than the medium gray most considered the default green. We can mix these colors to create our secondary colors of yellow, cyan, this bright blue-green color, and magenta, this vibrant pink-purple. Notice how these colors are even brighter than their parents. From here, we can continue and produce our tertiary colors. Orange, chartreuse, spring green, azure, violet, and rose. So, we'd actually have to move down to quaternary colors to even find indigo. Next up is the CYMK color model, which is the mirror image of the RGB model, used instead for printing. You may be familiar with purchasing your ink cartridges in cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. Black is used for text, but is also a darkening agent. 
The other three you'll recognize as RGB's secondary colors. Its secondary colors are red, green, and blue. Since CYMK is subtractive like RYB, we're mixing pigments instead of white, the colors get darker and more muted. Unsurprisingly, its tertiary colors are darker analogs to RGBs. There is one more color model I'd like to introduce, the natural color system. You may have been confused during the RGB segment when I told you that combining red and green light make yellow light. Or maybe you've noticed that while red plus blue equals purple and red plus yellow equals orange are obvious mixes, yellow plus blue equals green doesn't seem quite as intuitive. That's because of the opponent process. Opponent process theory is the philosophical study of thought that states that human beings naturally build objective understanding of the world through binary opposites, hot and cold, wet and dry, light and dark, good and evil, etc. The black-white dichotomy fits the model well, but a three primary color system goes against our natural inclinations. The way our brains resolve this conundrum is by placing colors on two perpendicular binaries, red and green, and yellow and blue. You may be familiar with the red, yellow, green, blue quartet. Everything from our freebie restaurant crayon packs to our game board pieces to our AV equipment labels utilizes this foursome. If we use these as our primary colors, we can create four secondary colors of orange, chartreuse, turquoise, and purple. This time we can clearly see that these secondary colors are without a doubt a mix of their primaries. Next we create the eight tertiary colors. Now that we've established a baseline, let's look at the results. What do you know? Indigo is, at best, a tertiary color in all of these systems. So clearly it's worthy of a demotion. And just as obvious is which color should be stepping into the spotlight. Cyan. We need to recognize the importance of the colors between green and blue. Turquoise, aqua, teal, cerulean, aquamarine, robin's egg blue. Indigo comes from this one genus of plants and this dye that's made from it. But blue-green is the color of our seas and skies. Oh yeah, you thought the sky was just light blue? Sky blue is a shade of cyan. I came to this conclusion myself, but the more I researched this topic, the more I realized I was not the only one. I mentioned the original eight-stripe LGBT flag earlier, the one that merged blue and indigo. One of their stripes was turquoise. If you Google rainbow, you'll notice that many images of rainbows do the same substituting a blue-green for blue, and using either barely purplish blue or just a purple for indigo. That's what DC Comics does in its Green Lantern series, Emotional Spectrum. The Blue Lantern's core wears shades between cyan and medium blue. The indigo tribe wears purple, and the star sapphires wear pink as much as they do violet. And this is verbatim from Randall Monroe's blog post about the results of his color survey. Indigo was totally just added to the rainbow so it would have seven colors and make that Roy G. Biv acronym work, just like you always suspected. It should really be Roy Gbp. It should really be Roy G. B. P. with maybe a C or T thrown in there between G and B, depending on how the spectrum was converted to RGB. The reason I and Roy G. Biv work so well is because it's a vowel. I recommend we throw in an A. For aqua. The acronym therefore becomes Roy Gab V. Not as catchy, but still pronounceable. I feel like I should tell you to like this video and subscribe, but I don't know, it's up to you. You know, I bet you're wondering one thing. There's a color more famous than turquoise that I haven't mentioned. One that does come in your crayon box. That color's brown, so why can't spectral color number seven be brown, you ask? Well, let me blast this conspiracy wide open. Brown is dark orange. Have you ever heard of dark orange? No, because it's called brown. Same reason you don't hear about light red. 
because everyone knows that's pink. Speaking of pink, which by the way would be the eighth spectral color, have you read those articles about pink and purple not existing? It's true. Sort of. If you're curious about this, Google the line of purples. Okay, I promise we're done this time. 